content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Boxing World Weekly, speaking with the former BKFC World Heavyweight Champion and a combat sports, I mean, legend. He's been he's been through it all. Joey, the Mexicutioner, Beltron, ahead of your fight next weekend on the BKFC card against Houston Alexander. And I'm going to start, Joey, with where did the passion for combat sports uh, come from for you? It all started when I was five years old. My uncle took me to go watch uh, pro wrestling. In the main event, I always remember the main event was Andre the Giant and Hacks Hunter Duggan. And uh, back then, obviously, we, I still thought I thought it was real fighting, you know, but I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to fight. I want to fight in arenas with a bunch of people watching. That's what I want to do. And that's where the dream, like, was ignited. And then um, fast forward a few years, like, I started boxing uh, when I was 10 years old. And I did that for a little bit, like off and on until like high school. And then in high school, I started wrestling. I played football too, but like, I definitely always um, excelled more in the one-on-one -on -one sports. Um, and then after high school, I was kind of like a knucklehead and got in trouble, went to jail and did a lot of drugs. And life started going really bad. until so, uh, I started cleaning up my act when I was like 23, um, went to school. Went to college, transferred to the University of Hawaii. And when I was out there, like randomly, I was waiting at, waiting at a bus stop. I just kind of like stumbled on, oh, what's over here? I stumbled onto a gym called Bulls Pen in, uh, based in uh, Honolulu, Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, yeah, man, the guy, the owner of the gym, Dino Fernandez, uh, I, man, he really opened his arm, opened the gym up to me with open arms. And, I started training and then fell in love with it. It was really when we went to the first show that, that we had people on the team fighting. It was at it was at Blaisdell Arena, so it was a big arena, like ten thousand people. And and just seeing like, oh sh, this is real. Like it's not a dream. Like these are people that I was training with on Wednesday. And now they're fighting in front of thousands of people on Saturday. Like, this can really happen. And that's when I like, yeah, I just really just, just went all in, like no plan B, no backup plan. And I dropped out of school and said, I'm gonna go be a pro fighter. And people kind of laughed at me. And you know, here I am 16 years later. <laughs> that's, a, that's a phenomenal story. And one that uh, represents something that I believe in, which is everything happens for a reason. But I'm curious to know, you've kind of stuck with, you know, the bare knuckle uh, combats your entire life, right? You went UFC, Bellator, now BKFC. You never really dabbled into like the amateur boxing or the professional boxing side of things or the WWE like you were, like where your dream started. So I'm curious to know what made you decide that, you know what, you know, bare fists, that's where I want to be. <laughs> a funny story is that I really wanted to do a tough man competition. Like remember the old tough man on, one minute rounds, gloves yeah. and headgear. Like, I really thought I could win the tough man back when I was 20 years old. <laughs> and then I sent off for the application and everything. And then it found out that I had to, do, I had to pay all this money to get, a, to get an amateur license and do all these medical exams. Like, shit, I don't have no fucking money. <laughs> like, well, there went, uh, there went that. I have always had a love for for, for boxing, and, and I always like, you know, because that's where I started off when I was 10 years old. And, and, um, you know, it's just kind of like being in the right place at the right time with the MMA. Like, I was right there when everything popped off. Like, yeah. I remember why, I remember being, I remember vividly being, like, in school, training, watching at a bar, like, the Kennel Grove Ultimate Fighter uh, season. Like, so that, it was like, literally, like, right place at the right time. Like, I was right there when the flames were being lit. And I just got on the, I just got on the rocket ship and held on and let's, let's go. You know, so the MMA just kind of happened. And then, um, you know, fast forward a few years, like I thought I, I really thought I retired in 2016. Really went through some personal hardships and, and um, you know, uh, checked into rehab, stayed at rehab for five months, lived there and got my life back together. And uh, then after like, I'm like, okay, I feel better. And 
my one of my old managers hit me up randomly. He's like, "Hey, how you doing, champ? You in shape?" I was like, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> and he's like, "What do you What do you think?" Sergey Karatanov, five months. I'm sorry, five weeks. Russia. I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "He's on uh, pace twenty and 20. I was like, "Oh, let's go, <laughs> let's fucking go." <laughs> I got as ready as I could in five weeks. Went out there and fought, you know, one of the best guys to ever come out of Russia. You know, and I went all three rounds with him. Didn't get knocked down, didn't get knocked out or anything like that. So uh, after that fight, I was like, I still got it. I still got it. I'm going to keep doing it. And, um, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get any um, smaller regional shows. I had been cut by Bellator. I couldn't get any regional shows to give me a fight. Um... And so I was kind of like stalled, like in a holding period. And then one of my other, my old coach, Eric Del Fiero from Alliance in May, he hit me up. He's like, hey man, you would be interested in doing this bare knuckle stuff, would you? I was like, yeah, why not? It sounds fun. And then he's like, all right, I'll get you on. And then that's how that worked. And I went out there and it's funny because it's like on paper, it may be a little like, oh, like he's just another UFC veteran kind of like BKFC's formula for success I was like nah man they didn't want me at first like me and Tony Lopez that crazy I don't know if you're familiar like with that crazy fight on the first ever BKFC with me and him covered in blood and beat each other up that fight was a swing battle those in boxing know what the swing battle is that's the fight that wasn't even fucking supposed to be on TV yeah we got warmed up three different times we got warmed up like oh let's go back to the locker and so the fact that it all played out the way it did was just like once again like shit happens the way it's supposed to happen you know because we weren't even supposed to be on TV they didn't really know who we were and it's funny but whatever we went out there we lit the house on fire and then I've been doing it ever since you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it <laughs> I won the belt three times you know so I'm alright you know, and uh, yeah man I, I love it that's amazing that's an incredible story so uh, now, you know, you're 40 years old, so it's no secret to anybody. So what if, you know, is there any thought in your mind of trying to head into a boxing ring? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, um, that's definitely like bucket list item that I'm going to do. You know, like, I'm not really, um, interested in like building my, you know, fighting back, building back and, and getting on a roll and bare knuckle and you know, challenge for another title or whatever. Like, nah, man. Like, I've already been there. I've already done that. I've experienced that. You know, and you know, ultimately, like, like life isn't really that much more special. Like, which my life is special right now. Like, I'm happy right now with my wife, you know, our living situation, and my family back home in California. Like, everything's like, like having a belt doesn't change that. It's pretty cool, don't get me wrong, but it's like, ah, you know, whatever. I already had that. I know what it feels like. It's mm -hmm. cool, but it's not like, oh, I need to have that. And I need to have the belt again. Like, my precious. Like, you know, yeah. I need to have it again. You know, like, nah, man. I'm, I'm just uh, trying to, A, I want to end on, on a successful high note with this with the Houston Alexander fight. And okay. then uh, put some gloves on and get a couple, maybe one or two. And then that, I'm good with that. I'm just walking away, man. That's awesome. I I was very curious to know if that was if that was where your plan was. Um, you brought up your wife Britton Hart, who's obviously uh, currently a world champion in, in BKFC. You've trained her, I believe, for her entire BKFC career. What's that like, and like, how did that relationship start? In both of you being in combat sports. Oh, okay. So no, actually, I I haven't really. I would definitely would not take credit for training her. I've been in her corner since her Jenny Savage fight. Yep. And we're more like teammates per se, you know? Um, but we both are in each other's corner because at the end of the day, like, we want that support system with you when you go to battle. At least I do. Yep. And um, so, um, how did we meet? The funny, funny story is that, like, I was, um, I was brought out to a show in Mississippi just as a guest because the, 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 the plan was Sam Shoemaker was supposed to win the fight and then I was going to get in the fight and have a face-off and hype our fight. So 
that's what I was there for and doing commentary. And then she was trying at that moment, trying to get the the, the Paige Van Zandt fight. Yeah. So she was there too as well, basically. Um, you know, just uh, you know, just for like marketing and strategically to be there. So we got there and we they gave us VIP seats and they sat us next to each other. And that was literally the first time we ever spoke because the funny thing was we fought together on the uh, second BKFC. Yeah. But we both lost. So <laughs> we were in the shuttle together, so we knew that one of us said a fucking word like fuck this place. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were we were in the mood for talking. You know? So fast forward and that's just like yeah I, I don't remember how many shows they on, but yeah when we met it was crazy like it was crazy just like just from the first conversation I was like oh my god I was like, man, this is what I'm supposed to be with you're my purse and that's with and uh oh yeah I'll keep it real funny thing was is, like I was still like in a relationship I was in the process of breaking up and and all that shit back in California. So I told her up front, I was like, listen, I, I respect you and I actually really like you, so I'm gonna tell you more. I'm like, man, like, I have a girlfriend back home. And she's like, all right, obviously like, whatever, fuck you. And peace out, left, we separated. The next day I called her, I said, hey, do you wanna ride to the airport? And she's like, yeah, okay, I'll take one. And so we're like, we're cool. We had a nice time at the airport, went to Starbucks, had a little nice little goodbye kiss moment. And, I really thought that I'm never gonna see this girl again, so whatever. That's that. But then, like, a couple weeks later, like, I would always say, I would always call and text her, she would never answer. It would take like two weeks to answer, like, whatever. <laughs> it's all good. And then, uh, but then little by little, like, the friendship started brewing, and then, yeah. And then when it wasn't until, like, I moved to Miami in, in January. When she called me and she's like, whoa, what are you doing in Miami? And she's, I was like, I came out here for with my coach to train and stuff. You should come check it out. And she's like, I don't know, maybe. And then, like, I think when I did that, it showed that, A, that I was really solid, like, in ending that past relationship. I wasn't trying to, like, have my cake and eat it, too. And just really trying to start a brand new life you know, out on the East Coast. And so it was really cool. So... That's how it all worked out. And then like, we reunited once again in Mississippi for, uh, I was cornering David Diaz in his first BKFC fight. And then we basically, no joke, been together every day since. That was March 17th, 2021. Wow. So is it not a bit, uh, is it not a bit tough, you know, being in BKFC together and watching each other in the ring? Oh yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll both say like, her fighting makes me way nervous more so than me fighting, and <laughs> vice versa. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. That part is freaking pretty nerve wracking, pretty her pretty horrible, you know. And like, but it's like as much as you can find like comfort and like I know the level of, of preparation. I know how hard this person has worked. Mm-hmm. You feel a little confident going into it, but it's still like, man, that's my baby. I can't, I don't want her to get hurt, you know, like, fuck. So it, it's definitely a process, you know, and like, if anything, like this past year, it's been fucking pretty rough, you know, and, and like life, life has thrown a lot of fucking curveballs at us, you know, like, and, uh, you know, but we're together and we're so in love, so it's fucked, man. Yeah, like for the amount of stress, I would, I would always tell her if, if, if we worked and I was the manager at Walmart, worked at a fucking movie theater, like we wouldn't have these problems, we wouldn't have these stress. But we're fucking high level athletes and we're fucking literally like winning, you know, win or die, like on a huge platform yep. for everyone to see, for everyone to see, for he can talk shit, you know what I mean? So it's like not normal, you know? so it's like. It's been a, it's been really, it's been really, for me, it's about growth and, and growth in my patience and everything and just dealing with shit and, you know, but like at the end of the day, like, yeah, man, I love that girl more every day. So it's going good. <laughs> That's awesome. And you have some kids as well. So what if they grow up and they want to be in combat sports? Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> is that they know what, they know how to like, 
like little Paris knows how to hold mitts and everything. Yeah. And Peyton's a really good natural athlete. But it's like she wants to be an actress and a dancer, and he's his really excels at archery of all things, which is random. Okay. You know, but it's like, all right, whatever. I think it's cool that they know what to do, but they don't want to do it, right? That's good. I mean, that's good, right? That's what that's what you would prefer, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so now you've, you've kind of touched, like I, I said up the top, you've touched kind of all the promotions uh, from that side of the thing. So UFC, Bellator, Cage Fighting, BKFC. And then, I mean, the answer to this question is probably Brit in the heart, but I want to know outside of that, your fighting career, uh, specifically, what's been the highlight of your fighting career? Oh, definitely winning the title in BKFC. Okay. You know, like, that was finally, like, when I was able to have that moment. Like, it was all worth it. And all this fucking pain and heartache and sacrificing for the last 14 years was worth it. You know, and so, yeah, for sure, that would, that would be the highlight. Yeah. Because I remember, like, fuck, I was so upset. Like, when I fought for the Bellator World title, and uh, I was doing so good, and I fucking ball and ran right in that stupid skinny bag that got knocked out. Like, god damn it. You know? <laughs> it is what it is. But it's like, but I, afterwards, I was like, it's all right, Joey. It's all right. Like, your dream when you're a little kid is to be the heavyweight world champion, not the 205 champion. Like, <laughs> so it's all right. It's not supposed to work out. It's all good. That's and awesome. so finally, finally, like when I when I was able to do it in BKFC, it was pretty awesome. What was what went into your decision to you know jump into this BKFC thing? Did you think that it was going to turn out the way that it's turned out so far? So as far as like my desire to do it was like already kind of like brewing because I was already like in email communication with with uh, BKB over in over in England. Yeah. So I had always, I had already kind of thought about doing it, doing the bare knuckle, and I was always a fan of, of bare knuckle fights, like the Irish Travelers and the Joyce family, and like watching all that shit on YouTube. Like I love all of them. You know, uh, Gypsy Boy McCory and everything. Like I'm a big fan. So I definitely like, I like the sport, if you will, and, and I, I wanted to do it. So when it happened. It was, you know, kind of like where I, where I was meant to be. And then, like, I was not surprised that it was, it was you know, I'm still not surprised that it's developed because it's like, it's, I look at it like this, like, our world is like such a different world now. We have so many people getting offended and, and going on rants on Facebook and making a stand, like, this is what I believe in. And if you don't believe in it, then F you. And, you know, so it's like, there's a whole other app, the other half of society that's like bloodthirsty, just wants entertainment. And it's like, you know, and another thing too, is like, it's 2022, right? About to be and I, I will still be in a bar that is playing the UFC, UFC. And as soon as the fight hits the ground, people start talking, oh my God, get up, stand him up, this is pussy shit. Like, like people still don't have knowledge about the ground game. Yeah. And so it's like, go we'll cut out the middleman, give him all stand up. And you know what? Take the gloves off. People are like, sign me up. Yeah. So it really does make sense to me, like the way that, and BKC and Feldman and everybody, they're doing it right, man. They're doing it right. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So now we're, we're here and you're fighting Houston Alexander, who isn't a new opponent. You fought him 12 years ago and won. Uh, by TKO in the third or in the second round, I believe. I want to know, uh, you know, what's what's your thoughts going into this fight, the second time around, over a decade later? I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a completely different game, it's a completely yeah. different ball set, and like, you know, back then, I definitely had the mindset, I'm not going to trade with this motherfucker. I want to take him down as soon as possible. You know, <laughs> and I did that. I took him down right away and beat him up on the ground and kept him there. You know, so it's like, obviously I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that in this world. So, you know, but it's like, I do, I do think there's a small little bit of like, you have somebody's number, you have somebody's number. You know, but I definitely am not like training that way. I'm training for the most dangerous 
you know, he knocks everybody, he's knocked everybody out. You know, I don't want to be another, I do not want to be another statistic, another yeah. highlight on this drill. You know, so I'm ready, for, I'm ready for him, and I really do think that I'm going to be the one to get the stoppage, and I'm going out there to dominate and put on a spectacular performance. That's awesome. So what? And you said uh, a win, and you probably move on to the boxing ring, right? Yeah. What if you lose? Same idea. Oh, I'm not gonna lose. <laughs> I, mean, I won't even entertain that question. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's been the biggest surprise of your career? I mean, honestly, like nothing really has been like it's it's been so weird, like such a crazy journey like when I was I don't know I honestly like I think like when I hear like horror stories from people that like especially from Britain like the shit that she's had to deal with coming up you know obviously she's a female and I'm a she's a very attractive female and I'm a big ugly guy so obviously like everybody that she's interacts with just in a position is probably like, oh well I'm gonna put my on this girl you know whatever it's, but it's like different, you know, but still it's like, fuck, I, I feel like it's like surprised me like how good I had it coming up. Like how, how, what it means to be a solid team, to have hard work, to lead by example. You know, I always, I always give a shout out to my man, Jason the Punisher Lambert, who was a UFC veteran back in the day, and belts were veteran. And just solid man, solid father, solid Really showed me what it's like to work. Like, if you fight on Saturday, you know, you take Sunday off, you're back and working on Monday. You know, because that's where championships are won. You know, that's where shit gets done. Is in the gym. You know, and you know, and just having a good, being lucky once again, having a good management, and like good people in front of me, around me. You know, so I would say it was a pleasant surprise. That like, man, I really had shit good when I started off. You know. I, I hear stories and I see things and I'm like, fuck, man, that's not right, you know? You know, so it's ultimately like leading into like what me and Britain ultimately want to do after after we get done punching people is like guiding people's careers and, and being uh, working on the management side of, stuff, of things and really helping, helping the next generation out. You guys want to start a management company? Oh, we will. We already got our LLC and everything. Okay, let's go. Uh, a couple of final questions that are a bit fun. What would you do if you weren't a combat sports athlete? Oh, man. <laughs> I'd probably be a salesman. I'd be really disappointed. I was, yeah, I, I, I've had all kinds of sales shots. Everything, selling cars, selling furniture, telemarketing, door-to-door -door appointment setting. So, you know, just one thing like that, working with people. Working with people and selling some shit. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Not only just in general for an answer, but that's good uh, for you moving on to a management side of things. And which also will lead me into my final question. That is, sell me on your fight next weekend. <laughs> oh, I mean, if, tune in to see if you want to see high level violence. Two people that are have a reputation for hurting human beings are coming together in one ring on November 18th. Somebody will get hurt and hurt bad. I guarantee you that. That's awesome. What about, well, how would you describe your style? Oh, my style is, um, <laughs> it's funny. I used to say my style is organized chaos, but you know, I would say my style now is uh, relentless pressure and domination wherever the fight is gonna land it or wherever the fight it's fought, whether it be in close range or at long distance. 